Today, I'm really talking about tools so that you can learn to dance with stress to, in the short term, reduce that stress response a little bit if you feel it's too uncomfortable. In the medium term, to be comfortable at these heightened levels of activation because life is going to continue to come at you. We can't pick the stressors, but we need to be able to function at a higher capacity often. There are times in life when we are just dealing with a lot, okay? This particular quarter, I happen to be directing a course, I'm doing the lab, I'm doing this. I enjoy all these things immensely, but I'm kind of near my threshold. Stress threshold is actually our ability to cognitively regulate what's going on in our body. So we've all hear so much about we need to unify our mind and body. Most of us feel one in mind and body, so much so that when stress hits, we feel it in our mind and body. A lot of stress inoculation, a lot of managing medium-term stress on the, on the time scale of weeks or maybe even a couple months, so we're not talking about years of stress, a lot of that has to do with raising our stress threshold. It's about capacity. And there are very simple tools, excellent tools that will allow us to modulate our capacity for stress. They involve placing oneself deliberately into a situation where our adrenaline is increased somewhat, not to the extreme. And then when we are, feel flooded with adrenaline and normally we would panic, it's about cognitively, mentally, emotionally calming ourselves and being comfortable with that response in our body. So unlike trying to unify the mind and body and make it all calm or make it all alert, this is about dissociating mind and body. In a health, the key in those moments is to learn to relax the mind while the body is very activated. And what that tends to do, there's a limited amount of research on this, but what that tends to do is it tends to create a situation where what once felt like a lot feels manageable. Okay, you've raised your stress threshold or your stress capacity. One way that you can do this, and this is kind of fun, if it's approved by your physician and you're able to do this, you can bring your heart rate up. You could do this through an ice bath if that's your thing, or a cold shower, or cyclic oxygenation breathing, or you could sprint, or you could go hard on the bike, whatever it is that brings your heart rate up. And then what you want to do is you want to actually try and calm the mind while your body is in this heightened state of activation. And the best way that I'm aware to do that, again, goes back to physiology, not psychology. When we are stressed, our pupils dilate. The effect of that pupil dilation is to create tunnel vision. It literally narrows our view of the visual world. We no longer see in panorama. And there's some other effects as well, but that's because the visual system through this cranial nerve system that I described before is tethered and is part of this autonomic nervous system. By deliberately dilating your gaze, meaning not moving your head and eyes around, but by deliberately going from tunnel vision to broader panoramic vision, literally seeing more of your environment all at once. You don't have to do what I'm doing, which is not blinking, you're welcome to blink. But it means di deliberately dilating your gaze so that you can see yourself in the environment you're in. It creates a calming effect on the mind because it releases a particular circuit in the brainstem that's associated with alertness, aka stress. Now, this is very powerful. If you're running, for instance, and you're at max capacity, you're close to it, or you're kind of hitting like 80, 90% of maximum on the bike, and you dilate your gaze, what you'll find is the mind can relax while the body is in full output. And it, this is, um, relates to work that in various communities, people are, are working with this in the sports community, military communities, et cetera. But it's a form, not really of stress inoculation, it's more about raising stress threshold so that the body is going to continue to be in a high alertness, high reactivity mode, high output, but the mind is calm. And so this isn't about unifying mind and body, this is actually about using body to bring up your level of activation, then dissociating, not the clinical dissociation kind of disorders, but dissociating the mental or emotional response from what's going on in your body. And over time, so if you do this, you know, a couple times, you don't have to do this every workout, but if you do this every, maybe once a week or so, you start being comfortable at these higher activation states. What once felt overwhelming and like a lot of work now is manageable. It feels tolerable. So that's what I want to emphasize that these medium term stressors of, oh, it's been a hard month or hard week or you know, uh, Stanford's on the quarter system. So 10 weeks or semester that is becomes more manageable when we train ourselves to be calm of mind when our body is activated.